Hello viewers, it's a beautiful day out here in California today and I'm, I'm very excited to host a very important personality who has come to visit us from Nigeria. Her name is uh, Professor Bimi Okay, and I want her to introduce herself the way she would prefer to be introduced. Professor, Professor Bimi, you are welcome, man. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are Amen. on the face of the planet. My name is Bemi Sola Oke. Okay. I'm a professor of community dentistry from the University of Ibadan. And I also work for the University College Hospital, also in Ibadan. I'm glad to be on the open pulpit. Amen. Master. Thank you so much. I'm coming to ask questions about this community dentistry you're talking about. But let's start from the beginning. What was your early days, years like when you were growing up, briefly? Oh, I was born into a Christian family, Amen. religious, um, Christ Apostolic Church. And church for us was second nature. We went to church in the morning, <laughs> church in the evening. And um, that was virtually every day, except... Wow. Um, on the days that we had to do homework and other <laughs> things. But church was our lifestyle. Amen. And that is from the foundation of Christ's Apostolic Church in Nigeria. Yeah, I too had a spell with Christ's Apostolic Church. Our parents, my grandmother in particular, would take us to the church and they lay us on the cold floor on mats and rain prayers on our lives. So the view of God, the prayers are still working till now. How about your early school days and years? Your primary school, secondary school, university, whatever it is? Briefly, ma. Yes, I was born in Kano, mm. in the northern part of Nigeria. Actually, you look like Fulani. <laughs> <laughs> and um, went to primary school and um, then went to uh, went down south to the um, to Ibadan and I uh, attended uh, St. Teresa's College, Ibadan. Up school. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the University of Ibadan, where of course I met with uh, my friend Toyi Fafura, who now is the pastor of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Jesus Embassy, Jesus Los, Angeles. Embassy Los Angeles. Amen. That's my wife. Yes, I know she's my your wife. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, went, we went to school together. <laughs> now, you mentioned something briefly about uh, community dentistry, you call it? Yes. Community. How did you get into medicine? What, what motivated you to read medicine to begin with? Uh, well, at the time that we were going to school, if you were a bright student, mm. You were either going to read uh, medicine or engineering. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so it was a natural course mm. for one with um, good school results to um, go into the medical dental school. And so that was how I found myself there. Apart from the fact that it was... Um, um our parents dream that their children <laughs> become doctors would become doctors amen thank you so much bro mm -hmm. thank you so much you mentioned like like i said you mentioned dentistry yes how come about the choice of dentistry why not ophthalmology or surgery oh or no no the way that dentistry is you Dentistry is the um, basic. It's ophthalmology is special is specialist okay. training. It's after you have studied and you have become a doctor that you specialize in ophthalmology, anesthesia, and uh, surgery. But with dentistry, you go straight and um, at least in Nigeria, mm. in that part of the world. You go straight and you read dentistry once you choose. So what, which one is your specialty in dentistry now? It is community 
dentistry. What is community dentistry? Taking health care to the community mm. rather than waiting for the community to come. You prevent and you anticipate that people may have a problem with their teeth and so you uh, have strategies to meet them at where they're located, where they're situated before they have the disease. Mm -hmm. And so you um, prevent a lot of diseases occurring. And wow. that is what I chose. Wow. After all, the lema will say prevention is better than cure. Thank you so much. I, I love that. And then I went to Africa a few years back and I saw many of uh, friends, family members, they, they smile at me and the situation of their teeth was pathetic. What advice can you have for a person to maintain his intention uh, to be, yeah, or as something to make like a yeah. As a matter of fact, um, science and health now realizes the importance of oral health to general body health. You discover that um, a man's or a woman's oral health may determine what is going on in the body. And there are common risk factors. So that if you prevent um, tooth decay, you may also be preventing heart diseases. You may be preventing diabetes. You may be preventing other diseases that are really serious. So wow. the oral health not only is the gateway to the, to the uh, body, but it's also um, a very good um, reflector of the human state, um, of state of health. Wow. So the teeth we have is not just for gnashing, not just for crushing bones. <laughs> <laughs> the teeth serve for uh, serve so many functions, so that you can enjoy your meals, so that you can uh, smile, so that you have good esteem of yourself. Good esteem, mm. and um, so that you live long. And, but then it's also an indicator of what could be going on in the body. Thank you so and much. And you could um, use it as a proxy. For... Question. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> Question. As you we were talking, I remember that we have some people, we see some people who put all kinds of colors in their teeth, gold and this and everything. Is that part of... Um, strengthening the performance of the teeth or oh well pastor you could be mixing two things up okay there are those who wear braces mm. and braces could come in different colors and those would be to correct teeth that are not properly aligned no no, no i'm not i know braces oh i'm talking about decorative gold you know okay and, um, yes there are some people who put ornaments uh -huh, on the watch. teeth and um, they have ornaments everywhere and then there's nowhere else than the teeth that they want to put these ornaments we discourage the use of these mm. ornaments because they pose a lot of um, risk to the wearer sometimes the uh, ornaments get dislodged wow. they can be inhaled and they can actually they, choke they can be swallowed <laughs> <laughs> if they are swallowed okay but they can actually um pose a threat to the life of the wearer and so we discourage but in the circumstance that we we cannot we ensure and we encourage that they go to the dentist mm. and it is the dentist that um, fixes these ornaments on the teeth. And 
By so doing, the dentist would give a regular um, check on the state of the ornament and um, ensure that the risks are I mean, lessened. Yes. The design, a kind of maintenance culture, so to say, right? Yes. Okay. Let me just ask one or two or three questions. Because in every stage of a human being, there are different levels. When you are young, maybe you are in the elementary school, or when you are in university, or in the when you ultimately became a professor. Stage one, what were the greatest challenges you had during these three stages of your development in life? Well, they differed. Mm. When I was um, in school, the challenge was meeting and growing to be who I am today, yeah. making my grades <laughs> and um, ensuring that um, the I met my parents and my own goals. Mm. As um, an adult, I then had a family, a husband and children. Yeah. And the objective at the time was to ensure that we had a healthy family, healthy relationship, and that we brought our children up in the way of the Lord yeah. to meet their own goals in life. Now is the sunset of life. Sunset, Professor. Life has just started. <laughs> <With the sunset. laughs> well, you're talking about stages in life. Um, the children are gone. Mm. Incidentally, my partner, my husband, is also gone. So enough. it's another transition. Mm. And um, one has to look and prepare not only for um, stages of being an elderly, but also you need to prepare to be, to be ready at any time. Okay. When the Lord okay, okay, okay. We are not ready. <laughs> <laughs> we have years and years yes. ahead. But you see, but you have to I need to let you know that um, the late husband of professor was also professor. Very brilliant professor of anatomy, right? Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Great, great friend of ours, my colleague. Okay. May your soul come into rest in peace in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the life continues. Everybody has to die at one time or the other. Our prayer is that we all live long in good health, in the matter of Jesus. Amen. So, um, Professor Bimi, from the way you are talking, you keep on making reference to the kind of Christian philosophy. Are you a Christian? By the grace of God, I'm a Christian. Born again Christian. Holy Spirit filled. Filled. Hallelujah, shouting. Hallelujah. Praise to God. <laughs> Remember when my wife got born again, and then uh, I didn't understand many things about this this born again thing at that time. I was so confused. You are the one that I ran to to say, "Please, baby, really? <laughs> I'm about to see my wife. Really? <laughs> What's this born again thing? Mm. You know." And you took time to explain it to me. The question I want to ask you is: Do you see Christianity these days? And the way it has already been from the very beginning, because I remember that there were those people we used to abuse who actually we used prayed to call us. Names. Yeah, who prayed us into into Christianity. Scripture union, and we used to call them SUs <laughs> because they were at the time fervent. For mm. the Lord. Amen. And you could feel the fervency just wanting to please and always to um, be in the presence 
of the Lord. I see that there's a change or a, a, tra a, um, a change in the sense that um, the world has become so complex mm. and the time that is available to us has become less and less. And so the time that we devote to being in the presence of the Lord is reduced, shortened. And that I think is the main um, change. Um, apart from that also, I would say that the value system mm -hmm. has totally been reversed. Wow. A lot is happening now in society. We don't even know what people are thinking, what they believe in anymore. And that, for those of us that have lived long enough and witnessed what it used to be, it can be very saddening. Saddening and frightening. And frightening. Amen. Prof, I know you are in, in academics. You people, your people went on strike for months and months in Nigeria. What are your observations? What, what can you say? What really happened briefly? From the perspective of those involved mm. and to the group to which I belong, was justified because the conditions under which lecturers are being made to, to serve. serve are not what it should be. There are academics all over the world and conditions of service are not what is being meted out to Nigerian academics. Besides the fact of the condition of the service is the provision that is made for teaching and learning. And that I believe that the government should pay more attention yeah. to because there is no nation that can advance in its economics, in its knowledge, and in its development without the input of research and learning. And so our government ought to put more emphasis and more priority on education, in particular tertiary mm. education. There is, there is, we are even hearing that um, another dimension is, is fostering, is coming up in Nigeria about uh, doctors that they, they should be made to serve five years before they are licensed to practice medicine so as to discourage what we call the brain drain. Well, the issue of brain drain or Japa syndrome, as we <laughs> call it, um, traverses all the different specialties and professions exactly. in Nigeria. Great it's point. not just the doctors, although the, it has affected the health sector the most. Mm. And you see the impact of it because we're talking about human lives. So, Japa syndrome is not restricted to the health sector alone. And I think that um, amongst other strategies or options, I think our government believes that it may be one of the ways by which you will retain <laughs> the manpower that is um, threatening to 
emigrates in large numbers from Nigeria. How that is going to work, really, I don't know. Oh, did that, I did believe that, that something you say, you say, fa, fa, fa. Wow. <laughs> I believe the solution should be a, an all rounded solution where the situation, the living conditions, and the situations in Nigeria would favor the youth, the grown ups, the mm. adults, the elderly from wanting to remain in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you good for all these illuminating answers. Um, there are a few more questions and we call it quits today. And then when I come to Nigeria, we will look at all the <laughs> aspects of our, of our discussions. Those of us in diaspora who are wondering about the political situation in Nigeria, what are your comments? We, we did election, you know, I'm not, we are not even sure we did election, you know, and then all hell broke loose and things like that. What are your observations? Are you a politician? I am not a politician, but I'm a Nigerian. Yes. And as a Nigerian, I'm concerned about what happens in Nigeria because it affects me, it affects everything. Even for those of you in the diaspora. We are affected, you seriously. are affected. Yeah. So, Nigeria is our nation. We have no other place to go. Mm. And we pray every day as Christians that Nigeria, the Lord will visit Nigeria and turn our fortune around so that we begin to um, make progress Amen. and advance and reach that goal that the Lord has ordained for us as Nigerians. Amen. Amen. As you know, Nigerians are brilliant. Nigerians are hardworking. Nigerians, wherever we are, we are go getters. We are go getters. Amen. We are outstanding. We are great people. And I believe that we will see a bright future, and the bright future is ahead of us. Very soon. Very soon. I love that. Thank you, Professor. You've made references to prayer or praying or showing that uh, Christianity has a lot of value, valuable things to do to help our country. And the Bible says, if the people who are covered by name, we humble themselves. Yes. Okay. Now, a lot of prayers are going in Nigeria. What is the weight of Christianity in Nigeria? I don't want to get political. But you have a Muslim president, you have a Muslim one in me. Sometimes we'll be hearing that the, the president of a senator also may be, you know. What is the weight of Christianity in Nigeria these days, despite all these spiritual activities that you may see? That is um, a difficult question, <laughs> okay. Pastor. Okay. But I know that the body of Christ is under a lot of strain and stress at this point Sorry. in time. And that is because the nation itself is under a weight of hardship. Mm. And when that happens, the Christian body would need to pray a lot more and endure a lot more and uh, we are being called as Christians to emulate our example Jesus Christ that had to suffer to be able to reach his goal 
and he came into the world, the son of the most high God, God himself, and he suffered to be able to achieve our redemption. Prof, now you are preaching. <laughs> And I love that. But so, the Bible says something. So. By pro, pro, wait, wait. <laughs> the Bible says, if your ways please the Lord, it will make, make your enemies, enemies to be at even peace at peace. With peace. You. To be at peace with, with you. you. Do the ways of our Christian leaders please the Lord, including me, including you? I would keep making a comment okay, all right. on that. We pray about it. The body of Christ in general. All over the world. All, all, over, all over the world. Yeah, yeah, is like, like that. Yes. To cope with so many things. Challenges. Challenges. End time situations. End time yeah. situations. Okay. So yeah, no. I believe that together and as the body of Christ. Whether being led or the uh, led should, at this point in time, go back to the foundation, go back to the basics. And the Bible is our reference point. Amen. And we should develop ourselves and ask what exactly is God asking us to do. Thank you so much. On that note, I'm about to end this interesting dialogue. But before then, I want to ask you a question. Is there a question you wish I would have asked you that I did not ask? In everything you have said? I think you covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call an unseen question. <laughs> Well, viewers, I really thank you for your attention. We've had the privilege of hosting Professor Mrs. Bimi Okeni Adeoku. She's been my wife's friend for years, years and years. And I've been the friend of her little husband for years yes, and years. Yes. The prayer we pray for you, viewers, is that people say that old friends are better than new. My prayer for you is that friends who are enemies, God will separate you from them. In the name of Jesus. Again, when you open pulpit, if you enjoy this particular interview, please share, like, and then subscribe to our channel. God bless you. See you again.